Hello everyone, how are we? Hello, hello, hello. Sage, super important. Who is here and good evening and how are we? Let us see how we are for our weekly talk. Sharon Tal, the soul alchemist here. Hello, hello. How are we? Are we ready for an amazing transformation? Are we ready to shift and move and grow? Hello, all of you. So happy to see your beautiful faces. Tell me hello, tell me you're here because we are going to do so many great things tonight. It's a full moon. It's a full moon in Taurus. So Catherine, I'm glad that you're watching, Miss Watson. And we're going to do so many things today. Hello, Queensland. Yasu. Hello and everyone. So I have prepared here something that I have prepared. Zoom, zoom. Um, Hey, hey, it's just like a few minutes of hi, 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 hello, how are we? Yes. So, what are we watching? What are we doing today? Today, we're going to do a few things. Today, we're going to increase the vibration of planet Earth. I'm going to do a special meditation through the hour uh, for the full moon. But today, because it's a full moon, I was guided to actually use my very cool conch to blow. Instead of the drum or instead of the Tibetan ball, today we're going to use my very well lipsticked shell conch that I brought from all the way from Hawaii. So I'm going to actually ask from the energy of uh, Lemuria and the energies to come through and to help and support. Thank you for joining everyone. Um, so we are going to allow ourselves to actually go through that release, that vibrational elevation, and to connect through the highest level of joy. We're going to put the fear away, connect through love, and increase the vibration. So from that point of view, this is what we're going to do. But first, tell me how are you? Tell me how was your week? Tell me what is it that you are looking for this week? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm looking forward to hear. How was your week? Feel the buzz. Hello to you. I hope that you can feel the buzz because I have some beautiful inspiration for us. And, um, you know, doing this live, I have a friend who said to me today, Sharon, it's been such a long week for you. Why don't you do it every two weeks? And I said, sounds good. However, I think that my commitment to yourself, to the universe, to increase the vibration is a weekly commitment that I am more than happy to do, at least at this stage. Um, if you guys like it, let me know. What I would like to do for us is to really... I trust this little baby circle that we have here, this little gathering that we have here so much that from my point of view, this is our opportunity to actually increase the positive vibration of the world. I haven't taught meditation um, at the clinic for a long, long time and some of you here have been coming to my circle. and. We are literally opening and closing the circle many times. So usually, just to tell you the structure for those who are new here today, we're going to talk, I want to hear about your week as well. And then I'm going to speak about the subject and another subject. And um, and then um, I'll run a little meditation. And then at the end, I will do a little bit of um, a reading for us. Not so good. Well, we need to lift it and we need to connect to what is good. Okay. So 
Here's a pattern that I know that I've experienced in a person, in personally, and I know that a few of my clients this week, that was like almost the theme or the spirit of the week. And the name of it is, but you promised. But you promised, that means, um, would you like to be on my live video, Catherine? You are watching. Would you like to talk with me here? Um, so basically, let me just, I'll just start to channel it and we're going. So basically when we have, but you promised pattern, this is where our inner child was saying, I'm disappointed. I'm sad. I'm upset. I wanted to do more things, but I didn't. The adult promised me things, but they didn't fulfill them. People say one thing, but then they don't do the other. It puts us in, or at least our little child, in a, in a state of disappointment, constant disappointment. And we don't want to do that. When we are, think about it this way. And I wrote it, I think, in the intro for today's session. Will you let a child drive the bus? If you had a bus, will you let a child drive a bus? I wouldn't. But what if I'll tell you that a lot of time our relationships are based or being driven by our little inner child that is usually not so happy. When you're going to play, when you're going to have fun, by all means, let the child do. But if you had one bad relationship or whether it's with your parents or with your sibling or someone close to you or a teacher and you're longing and yearning for their approval and then you're looking to receive their approval, guess what? You'll be effed because then they didn't give it to you. They probably still don't give it to you now if they are in your life. However, what we're doing, we are projecting it on all the people around us. So whether it's the boss, whether it's a colleague, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a fellow student, whether it's a, um, the relationship that you are in. It can be in your personal relationship. It can be in your professional relationship. Although, but in many cases, what I find is that when the professional relationship has created when you were an adult, you will not put your little child from your professional way. However, the dynamics in the office or wherever it is, we'll call it the office, will be very much debated or affected by that part of the childhood. Does that make sense? So if you are, um, I had a beautiful client that we had a chat on Sunday and she constantly has problems, not with her bosses, but with her colleagues. And then when she goes to the bosses, it is not being accepted properly. And I'm like, what is that pattern? Damn it. We need to figure it out. And what we found out is that she has an older sister that when the sister was 16 and the client was eight, she promised her that she will help her or she bought her, I think she was five actually. And then she was a bit older, like it happened constantly, but she remembers it even from the age of three, but majorly five. And she promised she bought her a dress and everything and everything was amazing. But then since then she backstabbed her all the time. So what happened is my beautiful client who is highly intelligent and highly capable and highly professional keep manifesting the problems with colleagues equal, just maybe a bit senior or not, that they are badgering them. And then when she goes to the parents, to the bosses, they don't listen. Because every time that when she was young and she said, but she did this to me, shut up, move on, yalla, get going. Does that make sense? So every time, guess what? Every time that she has been complaining over those colleagues, 
at work, what did the bosses do? Ignored her, didn't consider it as valid. And the client has kept being frustrated over and over again and trying to figure out what to do and how to do. That is highly, highly frustrating. However, when we have found and cracked it, she doesn't need to repeat it anymore. So yes, she changed the place of work, yet she's making sure that this pattern will not come back. Does that make sense? And now it's all good. Did anything like this happen to you? While you're writing, I can continue that this had happened to her because her little girl was still disappointed and still hoping to receive the love from the sister. But that sister was never supposed to give her love. So once that we have figured it out, the pattern, she realized she's there for work for professional reason and she doesn't need to really do anything that will affect her, okay? That will affect her on that spiritual level. And now things, the dynamics are brilliant. Does that make sense? So this is what happened when, it ha when, when you're allowing your child to drive it on a professional level. Now, what will happen when it is through relationship? Do you think that that will make a person needy? Needy in the relationship and frustrating for them? I think so. I think so. And when you're allowing your child to run the relationship, then you'll be looking for a mommy figure, a daddy figure, a sugar daddy. You'll have all these expectations from those people that that's not their job. This is not what they signed for. And hence, it is not going to last. Okay. Um, I have a good friend who has been dating this guy and he is a full on narcissist spit image, not physically, of the father, of her father. What does it mean that in her relationship with that person, she has been subconsciously trying to resolve and to imitate the relationship that she has with her dad? But it's not the relationship that she had with the dad. It's the relationship that the mother had with the dad. The mother is submissive. The mother was lied to. Guess what happened in her relationship? Manifested, repeat, replica, balagan, mess, oh my God, leave me alone. No good. To wake up out of it, to step out of it, it's totally the Stockholm Syndrome. Because one cannot fathom and one cannot actually comprehend or, or process that amount of pain. So they prefer to fall in love with a person or to accept their flaws by, I guess, replacing them and saying that this is a good relationship and this is a good connection. Does that make sense? Tell me what you're thinking. Has that ever happened to you? Did you ever have a relationship that you have actually created because you wanted to replicate and then you've dated your mom or your dad if it's out of balance, right? Not so good. So true. Thank you. So then what happens the next stage is that we are either become a full victim or we create the same experience and we can be vindictive, upset, nasty, angry, no matter or, or depends on your personal experience. And then you're going to be the same. You're going to be the same. Yeah, totally subconsciously, totally. Um, it's never in the contents. We, we, we never want to go into a sick bed, you know? Um, so what I've picked this week, it was the, but you promised, but you promised, you know, this is totally our, um, 
perception, fantasy, dream, expectation that Fs you over. Manifesting people who ignore abuse because it's familiar to your inner child. Exactly right. So then one of the things that I usually do in a session is I take you to this journey to soothe your inner child. I actually have it and I have here a couple of my students. In my book, 28 Lessons in Self-Mastery, there is actually a chapter about the inner child. Loving your inner child. And... Um, Yeah, love your inner child. Here, lesson 12 and page 65. So when you are, one of the things to do, would you like to do a quick, let's do a little quick exercise. Would you like to do that? Let's do that. If I'll ask you to close your eyes for a second, can you tell me how old or young your inner child is? And you do it very simply, just by closing your eyes, think, not even thinking, boom, get an age for me of how old or young is your little child, your little inner child, your little inner child. We're not talking about any um, children that you might have biological. So how old is your child? Write to me, tuck, tuck, tuck. This will be probably the age that we need to have. Six. Brilliant. Next. Give me numbers. Go, 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 go. Come on. Let's do some action. 16. Claire, go younger. Um, seven. Great. It should be, when I'm saying should, give me the ages between four to eight, more or less. Yes, Melanie. Eight. Exactly right. Two. Wow. That is very sharp. Very good. Now, I want you to see 10. Okay. See if there's any earlier. Seven. I want younger than 16, Claire. Eight. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I love you all. Amazing. I'm so happy that I can help and support as we are alive. Yep. Trev, seven. Dana, five. Yep, yep, yep. One or seven. It's okay. Just ask for a number. Hey, Jacinta, thank you. Stuck on 16. Okay, so from any, one doesn't even want to go there. Oy vey, right? So from any age, that specific age, I want you to look at your little child. I'm getting all goosebump here. I want you to ask them and observe, how are they? What are they doing? Are they happy? Are they playing? Are they sad? Are they lonely? Are they longing? What are they doing? Look and let me know. Are they happy or not? What do we need to do for them? Trav, go with age four. They're sad, right? Or here, at least it's sad. I'm sorry to hear that. I believe that a lot of your little kids will be sad. Playing alone. Yep. Not happy. Alone and playing with water. Playing. Playing happy or playing alone? Most likely, the point that you have seen won't make them satisfy. But you see, playing in the garden, playing alone, playing with the water... Are they, did they choose to do it or is it like a, a, a default? Like they have no, you know, playing alone, alone, alone. Konnichiwa. What we need to do is to connect to that little child, connect to that little girl, little boy. And I want you to sit next to them. If your little girl, Jacinta, is thinking about the future, there is anxiety there, okay? There is anxiety there. Remember, worrying or thinking about the future leads to anxiety because we are not safe to be present. Thinking about the past leads you to depression. 
because it's things that happen, but they keep circling in your head and might, might go to the bottle, one might go to gambling. We want to forget it. I don't want you to forget it, people. I want you to heal it. I want you to soothe it. I want you to empower it. Okay? And how do we do that? Sit, you, adult you, I want you to sit next to your child. Okay? Sit next to your child and I want to ask what is it that they need? Ask them, what do you need, darling heart? What do you need from me to help you, to support you? Because you, as adults who watch it now, you have more tools that you had when you were young. Okay? Do you agree with me that you have more tools as an adult now? Some of you can be parents, might be parents. Some of you have pets, but it's still a form of parenthood. Okay? So I want you to look and ask, what do they need? I can tell you that they will need basic. They will need love. They will need warmth. They will need comfort. Okay? They don't need much. They just need your love. Okay, you know the five languages, they don't need service to others, they don't need gifts, they don't need anything. They just need the physical touch and the words of affirmation. Yeah, play with me, love and encouragement. Basic, elementary Watson. We happen to have Dr. Watson here. Elementary Watson. Okay, love. And how does love look like? So how can we now bring that child of us love? Okay, so tonight it's a full moon, not only a full moon in Taurus, while it's Scorpio time, it is an eclipse which covers and opens and creates changes. So close your eyes and feel Feel the energy of you supporting your little own self child. So who is asking, are you proud of me? Does the child want you to be proud? That means that it always tried to please its parents and probably it didn't get it because if it's still asking, are you proud of me? That means that it's still not good. That means that you still have to achieve and achieve and achieve and achieve and make someone else satisfied. And this is where we want to heal and soothe that little child right here, right now, as join us. So go to your little child, hug him or her, and tell them, I'm here for you. I love you. I honor you. I support you. I've got your back. You know, today I was getting the message of what to do. Which remedies? It is, I am in trust. I am in trust. Order this. Have a few drops of this. I am in trust. It's enhancing your ability to reconnect and trust yourself again and support the trust in others you know i often say don't trust anyone you don't need to trust anyone because if you will trust you might get disappointed but what if you don't have to trust what if you can just engage with someone in and out what if you are so centered that you'll be able to assess within one second one second split second Okay, split second before you actually need to give your power away. How many of you gave the power to the relationship, right? Because you were hoping that they will give it back to you like you giving it to them. Well, fuck this shit. Don't give your power to anyone. Stay cool, calm, and collected. Excuse my language. Fuck it. Does that make sense?
Don't give your power. Trust your own guidance in relation to yourself. Lift the vibration of love. Lift that energy of love, no fear. Because guess what? You'll be waiting for them. You will be, you know, you'll be giving the... You'll be giving all your energy waiting there. And I'm like, mm, okay, do -doom, do -doom, pending, pending, pending. Am I ever going to get my energy back? Fuck it. True. Let go and let God. Let go and let God. Because if you don't let go and let God, nothing's going to happen. Now, it's not about bringing you back to the religion because it's not about religion. It's about your heart. It's about your true ally. And you know, often people find God only when they're in trouble, right? Don't be in trouble. Love God for what it is, as it is, without putting you in trouble. Thank you, Guy, for that. 100%. So when we are connected to our true essence, we know exactly what's right and what's not. We know exactly who is coming through to us. You know exactly who is there to support you. Now, I want you to have an ally. I don't want you to be depending on anyone else but yourself and Almighty there. And why is that? Because you won't be disappointed. You know, in Hebrew, we have an expression. And those who understand Hebrew, it says, Tzipiot yeshrak lakariot. So expectation... It's the same word as pillow covers. And the expression is expectations are only for the pillows because nothing else really matters. Does that make sense? I want you to be able to be so connected with yourself that nothing else. I want you to drive your bus. Okay. Shall we run a little full moon meditation? So let me just put some... Um, do you have any questions about that? So your homework and those who just joined me, thank you. Just You can listen to this from the beginning and there is a beautiful um, exercise, how to connect your inner child. So when you are now connecting and hugging your little child, I want you to tell them how much you love them, honor them, respect them and love them and then go and play with them. But try to make a little sign with them that they will tell you when they are feeling, okay, when they are feeling that stress. And that is a sign for you. So for example, when I was doing some intense therapy on myself to clear my past and, and as such, when I was working on it, I had cravings for the simplest, simplest potato chips. And why is that? Because I can tell you that in Israel as a young child, tapu chips, that was the name of the chips. And that's what I craved. So afterwards, after breaking few of those freaking chips bags, I was like, hang on, hang on. It's a sign. Okay. So now when I get the craving, I don't go and eat it, but it's a craving that it's a sign. So some people might have when they felt safe, they will crave a specific, um, a specific lolly, for example. Oh my God, I remember, I have a client who is now maybe 70. She used to come to our meditation classes. I'm talking since 20 years ago. And it's funny because I used to have a lolly jar, no more, no more sugar. But I'm saying I used to have it. And she used to go for the milk bottle lollies. And I'm like, Yo, why are you having those? She said, because that was my treat when I was a child. When I was distressed or when my parents wanted to satisfy or soothe me or pacify me, that was her reward. Does that make sense? So look at those signs and, and suddenly you'll say, oh, why do I have this? Why am I craving this? Oh my God, I used to have it as a child. Bingo, this is why. You are doing it. Do you have any sign? Let's challenge you. Do you have any sign? And no, Catherine, it is not champagne. And there are a couple of Catherine watching here. It's not champagne and it won't be any adult food or adult action. It will be something very innocent. So is there something there that it's very innocent? 
that you are craving when you are upset? Write to me, tell me. This is for research purposes. Tell me, tell me. See, you love milk bottles too. There you go. Lollies, big time. Do you see how simple, how non-complicated it is? Okay? Snack, chocolate, lollies, milk bottles. Nobody here with the savory. I'm the only savory. Sugar, sugar. Mm-hmm. Chocolate. Sherbet lolly, sorbet lolly. No, you see? And then the sugar will numb you, make you docile. So we have here ice cream, chocolate, milk bottles, nothing for me. Catherine, you were waiting for the champagne. Now seem to be cheap. So when we are moving, there you go, salty. You see, the sweetness is for the spleen. The spleen is about rejection, betrayal, and drama. The salt is for the kidneys and the bladder, which is about, um, well, that too, because if it's chips, it's both. So the, the salt is bladder and kidney, which is anxiety, dread, and terror. And the oily part of the chips, yes, the oily part of the chips is that liver and gallbladder, which is anger and frustration, okay? And someone here, salami. Joe, you're Italian. Of course you crave salami because salami would probably be given to you by your nonno or nonna or you used to make it and it felt safe because the Italian make their own salami in their own season, right? So, yeah. So, what is tonight? Any questions about that? I'm glad that I'm glad to getting you. Ding, 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 ding. Share it as well. I'm going to hopefully put it on YouTube. It's hasn't been downloading for the last two weeks. Highly frustrating, but at least you have it there. So this is a little bit about this lunar eclipse full moon, stability and intimacy. So lots of changes. This will be a catalyst to break away or remove any unstable foundations, situations or connections in your life. It will also present two paths. One leading to a future blessing and one leading to future karmic consequences. Um, once you have chosen the path, the solar eclipse in December, which is next month, and it will be the um, 12th of the 12th, it will bring the opportunities and the connection that you need to rebuild the, funda the foundation of whatever choice you had. So... These eclipses will set the tone for what you will continue to heal, strengthen, and build all of 2022. When faced with choices, ask yourself which one brings you closer to your inner peace and which one takes you away from it. And now, not only that, the question is as well, if you look at your friendships, if you look at your family, if you look at your colleagues, who drains you and who uplifts you? If you're going somewhere and then you're feeling drained, take, wear a protection, do a shield, do a little energy protection. Today, I met a friend, Baxter. I say, said, she said, I'm going to meet my mom. I'm like, okay, give me your shield and energize it. When you're buying this one, I'm actually cleansing and tuning it to your own energy field. And yes, it, it's like a, it will catch like a cage it can be a cage it will cage the negativity then you just sage it and release it okay so as well another tradition in relation to full moon and let me sage all of you and us another tradition for full moon it's about allowing allowing yourself to take responsibility haruka bird to take responsibility to step into your own power. Because otherwise, you are keep repeating the pattern. Okay? 
And as you keep repeating the pattern, you don't have an opportunity to grow. You're actually looping. And when you are looping, you're stuck. And then you don't understand why it's, you know, Grand Hog Day again and again and again. Enough. Basta. Get out. Get up. Break it. How do you break it? By being aware, by being awakened, by seeing things for what they are. Wake up, people. See things for what they are. And once that you see for what they are, you actually have a chance to do it. Um, and if you need help to wake up your third eye, again, I've created, I've created 22 remedies, elixirs, just for those reasons. Every time that I'm thinking... People need help. People can use that. Boom. I sit, create with the homeopath and move it with Jojo. Is that Jojo from, are you in Mexico? Jojo, that Jojo? Or is it Jojo Defina? Hello. Anyway, so when you're heading into But You Promised, it will be as well part of your father, of your mother, of your siblings, Move it away. Ah, oh, Joe White. Hello. Move it away. Shift it. Don't let your siblings, don't let your parents, don't let anyone rule you. We are not ruling. We are shifting the energy and lifting the vibration. Okay? And this is what we need to do. And this is how we're going to do it. So why don't we do a little meditation? Would you like us to do a little meditation and shift it? Shift the energy. So we're going to do a short meditation. Um, I will conduct it for the full moon, for the eclipse, because when this is like covering, we need to come out of it. And when we are covering, the moon is the intuition. The moon is the feminine. The moon is our ability to go within. Again, for you, my students, go back to the sun and the moon. It's about that energy. It's about that the sun is the masculine. It's the energy and the moon is all about intuition. It's all about going within. And once that you're going within, you actually have the energy to do it. So the moon is responsible for the tides, high, low, to the sea. <clears throat> I'm going to start with one and I'm going to end it with one. So do you give me permission? To start a little process. So I got my permission. You choose to stay or not. So let's do it. <clears throat> so in the name of the sun and the moon. In the name of the energies that surrounds us. I would like to help each and every one who's watching this clip to shift and clear their energy and to enable us to be connected on a higher level to ourself and directly to the Creator. This is not for religion, this is for directly to the Creator. Okay? Take a few deep breaths and allow yourself to connect to your child. With your child, you're sitting by the river, by the beach, on the mountain, a desert, wherever you feel comfortable, in nature. I would like us to invite a guide to come through and to be with us. You are protected with your energy, with your ability. I want you to truly connect to your little child. Whatever age that you see, feel, sense, connect to it. As you are connecting to it, your connection to your soul is becoming more evident. The child representing your soul 
And your soul then gives you the indication if it is happy or not. As we are now starting the full moon process, I would like us to connect into the higher level of joy, of happiness, allowing the beautiful elemental forces of the earth, of the fire, of the wind, of the water to come through. When you are connecting and shifting the energy, you are one with a creator. You know when you're hot, take a layer off. You know when you're cold, to cover yourself. You know when you want to dance on Mother Earth. You know when you want to splash in the water. You are connecting to all the elementals through this full moon, through this energy pathway, through your alignment from the 3D to the 5D coming from your soul with the inner child. Feel how your energy is connecting to you, from you. And here's a little feather that came from nowhere. We have the support that we need. We are transforming any fear that we have within us into that level of love, ultimate love, ultimate trust. We are pulling our energy from whomever we gave our energy without support. We are pulling it away, bringing it to us transformed and cleansed. No residue. No STD. Nothing that will stop you from being in your full power. You're allowing your energy to become you within your full power, charged with the elementals, charged with the spirit, charged with all this amazing energy that connected to you, from you, to you, through you, and being you. And as you are connected to your full elemental force, are you more aligned with the wind, with the fire, with the earth, with the water, with all of them, with a combination of them, you are connecting to who you are and what you are from that powerful energy. Have your little child with you. Be playful with them. Connect to them. Bring them through and shift them. As you are connected to this beautiful energy, boom, your energies are now starting to get balanced and get supported. And as you are supporting your energy, a shift is happening. Your inner child starts to be happy, playful, joyful, blissful. You're observing on the full moon, you're observing the energy, and you're allowing yourself to connect on that soul level to your mission, to your choice, and most important, to love. The love that comes from you to the creator, from the creator to you. And now you're starting to remember your soul mission in this life. What is your soul mission? Remember it. You don't have to share it. Remember it. Remember that this is an important time of the universe that wants to bring you all this joy via the vibration of love. We don't do fear. We do love. And once that the love is kicking in, you are invincible. And if we'll go to the beginning of the session, when the child needed that boyfriend, girlfriend, colleague, they needed their approval, there is no more approval. You don't need any approval. You can assess yourself as an adult and see, have I done a good job or not? And you give yourself, if you didn't get it from your parents, from your colleagues, from your siblings, you give yourself that approval. 
and say, I am awesome. Even when I still need to be improving, I am awesome. And that's where I am. We are now lifting the vibration of our bodies, of our neighborhood. If we are in Victoria, all of Victoria, lift it into love, no fear. Lift it above Victoria. Lift it, take it to Australia and take it to the world. From the world, take it to the planets outside. Let's ask for support and help. We are asking for support and help. Not save me, but support me. I'm really doing the best that I can and I can use some help. Ask from the forces of the light to join us and say, please support us. Help us to shift this fear through mutual love. And nothing can break love. And you are becoming that pillar of love and light. No matter what is happening, you are a pillar of love and light. You're asking from the moon. You're asking from the sun. You're asking from the earth, Mother Earth, Gaia. And you're asking from the wind to come and whoosh everything. And with this, I'm going to ask through that blow of this conch that represents coming from the sea, sitting on the earth, drying in the sun and blowing the wind. I'm asking and praying that all our prayers of love, only love, will be accepted and heard. I can feel the whole circle literally shifting. Well done, everyone. Tell me how you are. Come back to your body. Come back to this room. I know I am calm. And this is shifting the energy. And if we'll hear the doorbell, because my neighbors have heard this little horn, oh well. Because you know what comes with love? Do you know what the sound of the fire in our heart? Laughter. And when we have this laughter... You are invincible. You are beautiful and you are charming. Beck, you joined us late. Join afterwards. Listen to it again. I think you would love it. All right. So who would like a little reading? I actually have another beautiful piece to read to you. Actually, I'll read it now before I'll do the, the, the readings. Want to hear something nice? It's one of the courses that I teach. It's called Attitude with Essences. Um, before we do the reading, let me read you something really, really nice. I'm glad that you're come. Good. This is about, this is called Attitude is Everything. And this is a piece by Francis Balthazar Schwartz. Okay. Let me read you. Jerry was the kind of guy you love to hate. He always, he was always in a good mood and always had something positive to say. When someone would ask him how he was doing, he would reply, if I were any better, I will be twins. He was a unique manager because he had several waiters who had followed him around from restaurant to restaurant. The reason the waiters followed Jerry was because of his attitude. He was a natural motivator. If an employee was having a bad day, Jerry was there telling the employee how to look on the positive side of every situation. Seeing this style really made me curious. So one day I went up to Jerry and I asked him, I don't get it. Pardon me, you can't be a positive person all the time. How do you do it? Jerry replied, each morning I wake up and say to myself, Jerry, you have two choices today. You can choose to be in a good mood or you can choose to be in a bad mood. I choose to be in a good mood. Each time something bad happens, I can choose to be a victim or I can choose to learn from it. I choose to learn from it. 
Every time someone comes to me complaining, I can choose to accept their complaining or I can point out the positive side of life. I choose the positive side of life. Yeah, right. It's not that easy, I protested. Yes, it is, Jerry said. Life is all about choices. When you cut away all the junk, every situation is a choice. You choose how you react to a situation. You choose how people will affect your mood. True. You choose to be in a good mood or bad mood. The bottom line, it's your choice how you live. I reflected on what Jerry said. You do have a choice there, Travis. You choose the good. Soon thereafter, I left the restaurant industry to start my own business. We lost touch, but I often thought about him when I made a choice about life instead of reacting to it. Several years later, I heard that Jerry did something that you're never supposed to do in a restaurant business. He left the back door of the restaurant open that morning and he was held up by a gunpoint by three armed robbers. While trying to open the safe, his hand shaking from nervousness slipped off the combination. The robbers panicked and shot him. Luckily, Jerry was found relatively quickly and rushed to the local trauma center. After 18 hours of surgery and weeks of intensive care, Jerry was released from the hospital with fragments of the bullet still in his body. I saw Jerry about six weeks after the accident. When I asked him how he was, he replied, if I were any better, I'd be twins. Want to see my scars? I declined to see his wounds, but did ask him what had gone through his mind as the robbery took place. The first thing that went through my mind was that I should have locked the back door, Jerry replied. Then as I lay on the floor, I remembered that I had two choices. I could choose to live or I can choose to die. I chose to live. Weren't you scared? Did you lose consciousness? I asked. Jerry continued, the paramedics were great. They kept telling me that I was going to be fine. But when they wheeled me into the emergency room and I saw the expression of the faces of the doctors and nurses, I got really scared. In their eyes, I read, he's a dead man. I knew I needed to take action. What did you do? I asked. Well, there was a big, very big nurse shouting question at me, Jerry said. She asked. If I was allergic to anything, I replied, yes. The doctor, the nurse stopped working and they waited for my reply. I took a deep breath and I yelled, bullets, I'm allergic to bullets. Over their laughter, I told them I'm choosing to live. Operate on me as if I'm alive, alive, not dead. Jerry lived thanks to the skill of the doctors, but also because of his amazing attitude. I learned from him that day that we always have the choice to live fully. Attitude, after all, is everything. Now, who doesn't have goosebumps? Every time that I read this piece, and I've been teaching this course forever, it's like, yep. All right. You like? Good. Reading times. So what did we speak today? I'm awakening will open your third eye. And this is based, by the way, on a true story. I am in trust will help you to collect your own power. And I am calm will defeat the um, anxiety. Magnesium that I've created, the magnesium oil, will help your nervous system to recover. And we need magnesium for over 300 functions in the body. Now I can see your name when you all want a card. Cards are from my deck, From Survive to Thrive, by moi, Sharon Tal. So, oh, let me just, every day I'm shuffling. Okay, 